snowy Innsbruck in Austria, the venue for the second race weekend of the BMW IBS M2 Man Bobsleigh World Cup. We are ready for our second and deciding heat here at the Eagles track. The fastest 20 sleds go back into battle to decide the destiny of the medals. Welcome back, everybody, as we get ready for the action. Martin Haven and John Morgan. And as ever, in the frame, Francesco Friedrich, our world champion. But some new names to come to it, John. Yeah, this duo, duo from Canada, Justin Cripps and Cam Stones, well, they missed a medal last week by a hundredth of a second. Better starts today, better downtime, and Cripps, uh, he's, you know, he's looking to move up to maybe a silver. Well, Johannes Lochner, his partner Christian Rask here, well, they had a silver medal last week, and uh, they did pretty much what they did last week, third best, uh, Fifth best start time is something they could improve upon, but he went early in the heat, had some great ice to work with, and he's got a pretty good lead of 1,200s over Cripps. Oh, what a surprise. Francisco Friedrich who uses his longtime breaking partner, Thorsten Marcus. He's in the lead. Last week, though, he was in the lead by 3,400s at the end of the first heat. This week, He's human. He's only ahead by 1,500s. Well, there are the margins. Here's a little interesting fact that tells you what a crazy 12 months it's been. Less than 12 months ago, Johannes Lochner was a winner on this track ahead of Francesco Friedrich, the first race in Innsbruck last year. This is the sixth World Cup race in Innsbruck since Lochner beat Friedrich. So Hansi won, and then Francesco has won the next five World Cup races on this track within 12 months, and is quite likely going to win the sixth one now. That's what a weird year we've been having. Well, the fastest 20 athletes go through. Before we get into action, though, just want to have a quick shout out to British development coach Mark Silver, who was coaching Shan Stevens in the World Cup races last year and is helping the Jamaicans out. He's in hospital, board rigid. Listen, Mark, get better. He did a, a um, he was out running at RAF Wittering, where he's based during the week, had a heart attack, was rescued by air traffic control. And so he is in hospital now recuperating. So get well soon, buddy. And uh, survived a marathon during the summer, but uh, a regular job hey, around the airfield. Gotta, yeah. Somebody else we got to reach out to is Alexander Rodeker. He tore up uh, yeah. a bicep muscle. He tore his surgery. bicep off. Yeah, a couple oh, of weeks back. So he said surgery. He should, yeah. Hopefully he's out of the hospital. I saw pictures. Alexander, yeah. you know, one of the best athletes we've ever seen on the venue. Get well quick, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there is our start draw. 20 down to one. Friedrich and Margus go last. Looking for their eighth win together on this track alone, which will be the 12th of Francesco Friedrich's Eagles career. First leg to go in the second heat of the two-man bobsleigh World Cup here in Innsbruck. Hunter Church and Hakeem Abdul Sabur finishing 20th place last week, made it into the second run with a 20th place first heat. This break in there, Hakeem Abdul Sabur is probably one of the biggest units on the back of anybody's sled. Yeah. And he gets himself in there for an aerodynamic pose. Hunter. Finished 20th last week. He was the first man down in the second run last week. You know, and uh, he drove himself into that position in the first run today. Hunter coming off serious foot injury, he had some surgery in late September, dropped a weight on his foot, had some pins removed a month later, and he's still not 100%. Came out of the backfield in the first heat as well. 24th of the 29 sleds, 28 sleds that started, so had uh, didn't have great ice. Uh, the uh, the final run through the labyrinth was also cut up by Lamindine's brakeman, who got the brakes on much earlier than was expected. Well, Hunter Church gets down and done. 52-61, so 400s slower than his first heat. But in these humid conditions, the track possibly not giving up as much speed. He won't drop out of the top 20. 200 slower at the start, so that was pretty good drive down the track. These are pretty good lines. Pretty good lines there. Warming up for tomorrow. We'll be ready. 
Yeah, he, Hunter likes the four man a little bit better than the two man. Well, listen, he made the cut, and nearly a third of all the sleds that arrived here this morning didn't, so there you go. Hunter Church, the leader. Next up, Dubs Kaufmanns of Latvia. Only his second ever World Cup race. His first was two seasons ago in Sigulda. He and Ralph Bertzinch were alternating in the double two-man races. And Bertzinch not on the World Cup so far this season. Eggers Nemer, the brakeman. And their advantage over Hunter Church, 13 hundreds of a second. Let's see if they can hang on to that margin. Yeah, they probably going to get an 18 or a 19 start. A couple hundred, there's 17. That's the same start they had in the first run. Best velocity, keep your eye on that velocity. It has a lot to do in, of, uh, with the speed on this track. Up top where the speeds are so slow, you need to do everything you can to accelerate up here with things are flat. 1300s lead as they sat down. Little variance there, up to 3400s. That's because they had a better first team time and then a better start time by 600. 36, that should probably be neutral right now. Looks like a better run though, but for this young Latvian. Yeah. Fast and a little bit loose down through the labyrinth, but it is quick. And at the line, 52-34. Yeah. Sanders Prusas, the Which is time chief. That looks on. Kind of a moot point a because run. as he as he ducked his head, his brakeman was popping out of the slipstream. So, you know, there was that. But he uh, improves by a tenth. So he will finish no worse than 19th. I say he's going to move up two or three sleds, Martin. Watch him hop in here. I think he may well be right. Watch the brakeman. Watch the brakeman, and they just got to come in here, get that big body behind the driver in an aerodynamic profile. He tucks in there perfectly. Then he gets around curve one and two. Looks like he got a little extra pressure in that curve one than he needed. But, uh, ooh, the runners, he really turned the runners there in the exit, but he came out straight. You know, it's not the guy who steers the most that wins, it's the driver who steers the least. They're looking okay. at the uh, That's a good run. Yeah. He's going to move up. Be interesting to see what he does in the four-man tomorrow. Next up, Roman Heinrich, Lionel Lefebvre for France. And Heinrich just two hundredths of a second clear of the Latvian. Looks like they're sweeping after two sides here, Martin. Well, I think they count the uh, last of the four runners as the first sled. They did this yesterday as well. And there is a rule about it. Yeah. Which I'm afraid I didn't read. <laughs> Somebody did send me the, uh, the relevant text, but it was all a bit confusing, Pete Dunn. I, I need it explained in basic English, as you well know. Words of more than four letters just leave me floundering. So the crew from La Plan, Roman Heinrich, 16 best starter, only 18th at the bottom and just 200s ahead of Davis Kaufmanis, so he does need a better run. And John, it is definitely snowing no. more than it has at any stage so yeah. far this weekend. Yeah. 519, that's a much better start, Mark. They got the best velocity mm -hmm. as expected. And now you just got to get out of these top curves clean. You can't touch anything up here. And if you do, you're just tough to overcome any mistake up here. You want to maintain your place. He's got red numbers. That's relative to the start disadvantage. But best speed, 500, all things being equal. He should get the oh, five to five. He's neutralized there. See what the speed ranking is here. Best speed. He should get the green. There it is. 100 oh, horse. Not far, is it? He was 200s up in the first heat. How much more has he added? 400s. Okay. He's 1200s yeah. better. So my prediction that uh, Kaufman's would come on us would move up wrong. So uh, Roman Heinrich put a good run in there. Got a little yeah. bit better start time by 400s. That was the key, Martin. So, but maybe the start track. We've got a couple good improved starts this time, except for Hunter. But here? Well, these yeah, boy, didn't get well, in cleanly the in the first heat. Settled. 
The brake is Same as in heat one, the John. Driver. Yeah. But look how low he gets well, in that, there. Good aerodynamic profile yeah. in there. That brake lever just missed the wall, though, didn't it? Only yeah. just. Mm -mm. The brake, the uh, push handle, rather. Next up, Sun Kai Chi. Well, the first three sleds came after the top 20. Sun Kai Chi was the first man on ice. Let's see what a difference that makes. 5.20, so he goes a little quicker at the start. Yeah, three of the four sleds have gone quicker. This is a 24-year-old decathlete. They got him out of the track and field program in China. And that's my athlete of choice in this sport, especially in the front seat. A guy named Friedrich was leading, uh, leading the competition. Him and his brakeman, both Thorsten Marcus, are decathletes. This is his fourth World Cup race, John. He hasn't raced outside of China for over 12 months. And yet, he is hanging on here. 900. Slipping away back. a little. Yeah. Yeah, but he's going to be at least yes. at least third. Yeah, 52, right. 48. 700 slower. That's pretty good. Pierre Luders, the Olympic gold medalist in, for Canada in 98. He coached the Russians in 14. He coached the Koreans in 18. And he moved over to China for this quadrennial. Well, listen, Sun Kai Chi, the driver here, finished 25th last week in Innsbruck. He's no worse than 19th today. So that's positive improvement in just a week. Martin, the key to his success today, he drew number one in the first run. And then he took didn't advantage panic. of it. <laughs> nope. Yes, took exactly advantage right. Of it. Snow's exactly starting right. to come. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, a long night tonight. Next up, Dominic Dvorak in the Czech Republic with Jakub Noshek. Now, we saw Dvorak sitting on the wall in the finish area several minutes after the end of the first heat. Was it just heartache? Or was he physically sick as well? I mean, this 22nd is another best decathlete. start. Drove, them, drove themselves into 16th spot. Mark, Is it him decathlete. that's a 10, 900 meter runner as well? Yeah. He's, he's yeah. another decathlete, but Martin, he's not getting any of the starts he used to get. So I think when we yeah. saw him sitting on that wall down there with his head between his legs, I think he's wounded. I think he realizes it, but he's not getting anything near the starts. Look at that, he's got the worst start of the five sleds, and he's one of the best athletes in the field. So I think he's wounded. Yeah. Kind of all he can do to maintain his position. The last thing you need back, in the Olympic season is to be missing races either from illness or injury. Every and, point and Martin, counts now. Martin, this guy here was third in World Cup standings last year. So yep. he's in the back of the pack. He's not doing anything like um, he did last year. And long season and unfortunately, when he started off hurt. Yeah, last year's points aren't going to count towards the Olympic qualification. It is all on this year or nothing. 500's back. Every position is going to count here, and he drops two. Drop two. Well, Kaufmanis from Latvia, I said, would move up. He did move up. He moved up two spots already. Borjak, 14th last week. He will be no worse than 18th this week. Look, yeah. Look, look. He can, look and you know back. what? Look, he can barely get out of the sled. Or, or is he sick, sick? No, he's limping, isn't no, he? No, he's, he's, he's definitely wounded. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that brings the foreman into question for tomorrow. And he's laying it on the line here at the start, giving whatever his body uh, has got. And this is one of the better athletes in the front seat with usually good starts, and he's at the back of the pack. And he's, you know, wow. You feel sorry for athletes that do so much in four years and come to the Olympic season and just, it's so hard to maintain your health with the demands that this yeah. sport puts on you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the good news is that it is only the second and not the final week of the season. Roman Heinrich Lees from Davos Kaufmanis and Dominic Dvorak, five down, 15 to go in a snowy race in Ingles.
struggling to get a four-letter word out. I'm not going to do very well with the Scrabble word scores today, am I? Well, five sleds down, and next up we have the 15th fastest sled in the first heat, Seaman Friedley with Andreas Haas on the brakes. So the Swiss with this development sled. Now, look at the front bunks. Look how long they are, and the rear one as well compared to anything else, very different look. Look at that long bunk down the side of the sled. It's almost like a, a side pod on an Indy car. Yeah. So, it partly for aerodynamics, helps the dry, helps the brakeman stand on it to get in as well, I guess, but... Yeah. He was ninth in last week's race, Mark, and to have him back here yeah. in 15th place with the seventh best start time, uh, he had a bad first run. And he started 11. The draw wasn't terrible. Let's see what he can do here. He's lost all that time. He was 1,700 up before the Chrysler. Now he's in red numbers. Going to drop at least one, if not two places. Three wow. places. Wow. Drops three. So Roman Heinrich moves up. And this is what I mean, these, these results, every single place could make the difference between you being in the 25 sleds that go to the games and not. It is as simple as that. Every race yes. is a qualifying race for the games. 1700s lead, as he came out of here, he had about a 1000s lead. But look at the difference in speed. He's two kilometers plus down. Maybe these aerodynamic callings you're talking about, Martin, aren't so aerodynamic. But last week he got ninth. I'm thinking there had sled the same sleds week. as last week. Yeah. No, no, that's a that's a development Valna sled. Um, so you're saying that's a new that's sled the first this week. time? Half, yeah, have not seen that sled before. Well, that sled didn't have good speed <laughs> on the bottom part of the track. Could have been driver well, error. But... Dis yeah. H Hannes Valna would say it was the driver. <laughs> the driver would say it was the sled. <laughs> so you know, somewhere in the middle there. Oscar's Kuba of Latvia now, 14th after the first heat with Matt Smithness. And Kuba Manis not in prime form. He's had podium finishes, John, as you pointed out, like half a dozen races in a row here, and nowhere close to that at the moment. The guy with this, you know, he had five straight races before last weekend. Five straight races he medaled in here to a man. Last week mm -hmm. he finished 12th or something. Here he's back in like 14th, yeah. 13th place. He's got the best start time of the back 10. Sixth best start time overall. Just not performing at the level I would expect, Martin, but I also say he could be just hanging around, qualify and peak for that February event called the Olympics. Well, the only problem is if you're getting 14th and 15th places, you're not guaranteed to qualify, and your nation is not guaranteed to get two sleds in either. And that's going to be a particular issue for Latvia because they don't have, right now, a second strong driver. And Look the French this. hang on by a hundreds. This is huge for them. Well, and the restrictions for the number of sleds going to the games are getting tighter with every He's in quad. Martin. He's in. There's no way that he's not in the Olympic Games. You know, and they got they got sleds hey, out of the Europa it's Cup. It's not January yet. He only needs to miss a race weekend through illness or injury, and suddenly... Uh, he's in. But he lost well, all this well, time yeah. down here. He had 20 hundreds up top with the, you know, with the French. And Heinrich was 17th mm -hmm. last week. He's up now where, Martin? He's almost to 10th. Yeah. Well, 13 sleds remain. Roman Heinrich leads as Oscar Skubermanis walks away thinking, OK, I don't know what's going on here, but I'll be glad to get out of this place. What about Benny Meyer of Austria, medalist on this track in two man and four, but today 13th after the first heat. Now, his advantage over Heinrich, only 13 hundredths of a second, which is an all oh, and a mistake getting into the Got first turn. Look at the velocity. Yeah. yeah, he got in late there. Six, but pretty good. Six best start, fifth best velocity. So even with the late entry into the sled, you know, and Martin probably uh, been down this track more than anybody. As you said, he's won medals on this track before last year. Twelve hundreds in hand. You would think he's going to beat the French yeah. here on the bottom. 
Well, that's, that's less than he had in the first heat, and it's now into single digits. Heinrich was Beat the fastest out. sled from the Kreisel to the finish. He's not going to hold on. Oh, oh, he's not. It's dead heat. Top 12 is beckoning for Robin Heinrich. The French had a really good run, and wow. Benny Meyer slips two. Heinrich and Kibermanis are separated by just a hundred, so effectively that is one sled but two places. So Benny drops two spots. And he's tied with the other Latvian for third. With a couple months, yes, he is. What's this? So that's Brakeman's in, Brakeman's sitting yeah. down, Benny's still not down. You know, this is not easy. Getting in these sleds. And then watch where the right runner is. Granted. He's not steering. And look at the He's split steering, in the cowling. Yeah. Look at the split in the cowling. That's a, too much pressure there to have up there where the speeds are yeah. slow and the first curve like that. And boy, not often he loses 12, 1500s on his home track. Look at the difference in speed. Yeah. Kilometer and a half. Is it the snow in the track, Martin? Or is that driver error? Driver error or early that on. Sled? That's where you lose. The, that's where you lose the race. You don't want the sled steering itself into turn one, and that's what it was doing. So Roman Heinrich on the right, Lionel Lefebvre on the left. That's a proper woodsman's beard, isn't it, Lionel? And uh, best wishes to Big Dorian Oteville, who has not been fit to compete so far this season. Next up, Chris Spring and Sam Jaguer. The professional footballer from the Canadian Football League. Chris Spring do his hair specially for that headshot. That's that is a great looking head of hair he's got. 12th place and their advantage of our, over Roman Heinrich, 15 hundreds. So they had a couple more hundreds of a second than Benny Meyer. But again, it's not a lot to play with. 20th best start in the first run with Sam Gregor on the back. Sam's a Canadian Football League veteran. 525, 100 worse. What we've seen from Chris Spring, though, he's got some good lines coming down this track. And, with, you know, got a Gave 400 away half speed his there. Lead in the start, and it's down from 1500s to 400s now. That was the start deficiency between the two of them. Heinrich had a 600s better start, but I think now it looks like Springer's neutralized it. And they're, ooh, that hard hit there. See what the speed better does. Best speed, speed though, this is what he does. He's, here he comes. Well, in fact, tied, tied, to the tied for speed. Uh -oh. This could be Another a dead heat at the line. Heinrich was fastest, no, no. Heinrich holds on. Same wow. speed as Benny Meyer, so they stay ahead of Meyer by 200s as they were in the first heat. Same time down the track, but he drops to third with 10 to go. This is what Spring did yesterday. He went from 16th all the way to 10th yesterday. So that's what Heinrich's reversal of, of fortune. Yeah. Big hard hit here though, Martin. This is where he lost a lot. That's a hard hit coming off the curve nine. Yep. He let it go straight. You see the runners, he's checking them a little bit. This is down on the labyrinth. Ooh, the back end goes up. That puts a lot more pressure on the nose. Yeah, doesn't like what he's seeing, does he? So, Chris Spring, eighth last week, will be no better than third, well, no worse than 13th. Top 10 first heat run for Monaco's Rudy Rinaldi and Boris Pan. And that is a good start from them. 12th quickest from the start. And last week they finished in 13th place. Now, can they ha hang on ahead of Roman Heinrich of France, our current leader? Well, they got 2,400 in the bank. And they have the best velocity into curve one. You know, nice to see Rudy healthy. He's had a bad couple of years with foot injuries, <laughs> Mark. Yes. Well, basically, since before Pyeongchang, he's been on and off the sick bench, hasn't they, all the way through. And he's not, no four-man team, so it looks like he's just concentrating on two-man, and he had the seventh yeah. best time of the second run last week. He's got a pretty good run going here right here. Here we go. Here. Yeah, he does. He could move up now. 
What is it, French Day? 105.8, better speed than anybody so far. 2700s accelerating away. Top speed at the bottom, 121.2. And he's a little shy of that, but he takes the lead. Look at Bruno Mejean on the crutches. Of the French Olympic medalist from 98, and world champion in 99. The coaches both the French and the Madagascar. Torres Achilles, and as we know, playing the soccer there over the there. Yeah, in a soccer game for the coaches last week. Yeah. Good run for Rudy Rinaldi. Top 10 guaranteed. He'll accept it yep. again. Good to see him healthy. You know, he's, you know he can drive. Well, remember that day in, Mon in Lake Placid where he's leading at the end of the first run and crashed in the second run, going for it. Yeah. Well, that's what you like to see in a sportsman. Rudy Rinaldi leads from Roman Heinrich, an all Francophone at top two. Oscar Skibermanis in third, and 10 to go. So we had a dead heat for 10th place in our first run. We've just seen Rudy Rinaldi of Monaco have his go at breaking it. What about Marcus Treichel of Austria? Well, Marcus Klick behind him. They had the seventh best start. They had the almost the best ice, second out of the start shed. Top 10, can they hang on there? Well, look at the velocity, fourth. Probably gonna be close, to, he's 300s up, but I don't know if he's gonna be 300s up at the next clock. So if he should get out to five, there it is. That velocity killed him. Could yeah, see red numbers, now they have we're better seeing him speed. now. Well, he was the second guy out of the box, Mark. He didn't even make yeah. the cut last week, but he was 21st out last week. But still, this is going to be, no matter what happens, a good performance for this young Austrian. 2100's first to second at the moment. But it doesn't look like he's going to drop any further than fall. one spot. Yeah. Holding on. He could, he could fall he behind, behind. Yeah, not quite. No, he doesn't. So, Rudy Rinaldi, Boris Van, stay in the leader's box. Good, uh, good top 10 possibly finish. Top 10. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the best Austrian of the day. He's ahead of Benny Meyer. That doesn't happen too often yep. in two-man for this kid. Not very often. Nothing like being the number one sled of your country. There's a lot of races within races. The lines into curve nine, the pivotal part. Look at the eye, look at the runners here as he exits the curve. See any steering? Not really. You see any spray off the back, the back, our back right, his back left, little drift there. Pretty good run. Great top 10 finish. Martin, I don't know the last time he finished 10th in a two-man event. Wait. Yesterday he didn't even, yet, or last not... week he didn't make the cut. <laughs> no, you're right, 22nd. Well, last week Benny Meyer finished 11th. He's second place with nine to go, so he could finish 11th here today. If somebody else makes a slip, it could well be a top 10 finish for Marcus Treichel. So nine the sled sleds only... remain. There's the leaders. Yeah. The next sled up, Martin, yeah, is the 100th. Next... They have 100th yeah. advantage. Well, we had a really tight group. We had Rinaldi and Trichel tied. 100th ahead of them was this man, Christoph Harfer. Next sled is 100th ahead of him. Next sled is 300th ahead of him. Next sled, another 100th. So you've got half a dozen sleds covered by six hundredths of a second. There could well be some big changes now. And it's going to look like a massive drop. If you give away two or three hundredths, you could lose three places. Yeah. Christoph Harper, Matthias Sommer. Sommer, very inexperienced brakeman, but clearly got the speed in training to get the nod. 5.26. That's seventh best velocity. He's going to have to drive himself into this lead. And he's a very capable driver. Martin, we mentioned the first heat. He's the only guy in the field that came from Luge. Most sports, we're talking track and field, soccer. He's the only guy to start his career on that other ice court, Luge. Best yeah, speed. Last German driver. hundreds down. Can... Last German driver to convert from Luge was Nico Walter, who retired a couple of years ago. Best speed, best speed he again. Could come back. Yeah. 800s. Could come back. He's yes, going to be close. He's going to do it. 
This shows why he's close German at the line. Driver. He's got great eyes. Heinrich had good speed at the bottom, but he takes it by a tenth. Wow. So he had better speed than Roman Heinrich. He had better speed than Rudy Rinaldi. The FES sleds are flying. Yeah. Well, FES were hauled over the court. They were hauled over the coals after the 2014 games for some really disappointing results. But FES have absolutely been on the money in 2018, and it looks like they're going to be here as well in 2022. Martin, I always say it's not the arrow. It's the archer. You still got to have a good driver. Mm -hmm. Make this happen. Yes, These do. are perfect lines. He, he was deficit above Kreisel. He drove himself into that position. If you put a multi Indy Luge. car champion in the, in the 33rd car on the grid at the Indy 500, he's unlikely to win it. So it's a combination of everything. Mikel Vogt, Sandro Michel, ninth best start from these guys, drove themselves into eighth place. Let's see what they've got in heat two. They've got a hundredth advantage from the first run, but they have a much better start. Yeah. So now it's 10, good velocity. This should grow out to 15 or 16 hundredths at the next clock. Then he's got to hold on because the after just had a great drive down the track. Look at that, 21 hundredths up. That's all relative to the start. Now, could yeah, be this neutralized. could come down to being a dead tap. heat. Yeah, 21 hundredths. Not great speed. Not good speed at Coming all, back. 15 hundreds. But Harper was the fastest sled from this point down, John. Yeah. Getting closer. Not going to be enough. Not going to be Four. enough. 400 and 300 him. meters. There's the line. Who's in front? Oh, oh 7 hundreds. Harper was flying. Couple yes, mistakes. Yes, he was. By this young uh, Mikel Vogt. Drops one spot, still top 10 finish. Seventh last well, Christoph week. Christoph Harfer, Harfer was 15th last week and they have sort of intersected as Harfer's going up and Mikkel Vogt is coming back down a bit. You don't have a long career in the German bobsled team when you're finishing 15th, Martin. So <laughs> that's why he's up in the you top did. 10 this week. You did say that last week. You think he's had a rocket. Yeah, well, he had a little conversation with a few people and he finished in the top 10. Mikhail, another top yeah. 10 for you. Yep. Here's the story that I like right here. <laughs> yeah. Romania's Mihai Tentea. Seventh place in the first heat off the 14th best start. Well, at least he's pushing. At this time last year, Ciprian Darocci, his brakeman, was doing all the pushing. Mihai had to sit in. He got a torn hamstring early in the season. Sat in for like three or four races and still made the cut. And that's how quick Dorochi is on the back of this sled. 521, so he's got a 900 lead. Velocity's two. But Martin, he's the smallest, shortest guy in the competition. He's pretty thick, but he has got good eyes and hands. He's gonna need him to maintain a top 10 position. No matter what happens, it finishes in the top 10. That's a huge achievement. Only the eighth best speed here. That's not looking well, his good. His previous, previous best is 10th place, and that was last week. It's only his 17th world speed. cup. OK, not as quick as the not German sled. One hundredth in it. But how far not does he fall? Do is he going to be second or third or fourth? Second. 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 One hundredth ahead of Mikkel Vogt. That's great. That's still awesome. And still you see the Germans still helping out the Romanians. This tiny nation of sliders. They compete in just about awesome. everything. Yeah. That's a great result for this for this uh, nation that doesn't have the same assets that a lot of the other big nations have. They know it. But this young yeah. kid, we saw him, he's 18, so now he's like 23, you know, and he's he's got some great yeah. eyes and hands. Give well, he was 10th last slips. week, his career best in two-man. He'll be no worse than eight today, his career best in two-man. That's PB's how you start to peak best. for the games. Yep. Personal best.
There you go. Yeah. Takes that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love that, Coach. Come on. Yes. Well, good stuff from Mihai Tentea and Ciprian Dorocci of Romania. They don't have the lead, but they have a personal career best for Tentea. Second place with half a dozen sleds remaining. And again, with only 600s between the top two, there is a possibility for a little bit more. So there's Christoph Harfer, Matthias Sommer on the right-hand side is Brakeman. Called them German coaches, I, yeah, they're German athletes. Cody Basque and Carlo Valdez up next for the USA. Ninth best start, a 5.17 came down into sixth place, but they are at the head of this six sled pack covered by six hundredths of a second. Breathe and you're out. Carlos Valdez, UCLA athlete. Took a couple years off. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 518, well, sixth best in. start. Not bad, 13th Cody. best velocity. Oh boy. Cody just got in. Remember Christoph Harper in the four man last week? Didn't nearly yeah. get in the sled? It is. Yeah. He's got 1,500s to play with, though. And, you know, Cody's got better starts this year. We talked about it. They got that yeah. brand new ice facility in Lake Placid. And the U.S. team was all over that in September, October indoor training facility that's just awesome what New York State's done up there with. Investment wow. in Holding his back. lead now, but the speed was woeful and is still Way not back. great. Only 40 fastest, two kilometers an hour down. So how far does Don't he drop? A tenth back yeah. is four places. Ooh, it is five four places, places. Third, four places back, 1300s. Mistake at the start. All he right. did the same thing last week. Martin, he was in second place last week into the first heat and had a yeah. little problem driving between curves one and two. Fell back to fifth. Great performance here. It doesn't look like he'll be in the top ten, does it? Gets Ooh, his look, foot, his foot hooked got on the cow. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. And he's already getting his body in, his foot independently, hanging on to that you know, cow. Well. Look at Sixth Carlo best. behind in a holding pattern there in midair, waiting for his driver to get in. Yeah. Second heat both weeks has not been the best for Cody Bascu. Christoph Harfer, the leader, with five to go. A week ago, Brad Hall was in the medals in the two-man. The medals are currently 12 hundredths of a second away. He's got Nick Gleason, the parachute regiment soldier, behind him today. What can the British sled do? 518, that's six hundredths off their first team start. Good velocity. But I don't think he's worried about the leader, Hafner. I think he's worried about trying to win another medal, and he's got to have a perfect run here, Martin, to yeah. do it. Well, it's never easy, but he is definitely on a high now. 3,400s, fourth best speed, but he's holding his advantage over Harper. Little skid there out of the Chrysal. He was second on the Yang Ching Pre-Olympic race a month ago. Surprised a lot of people. That medal last good week speed surprised at the bottom. a lot of people. Very good speed leader. at the bottom. Now, is this enough to put him up into the medals again here at Innsbruck? 52-26 slide. And that is 100 slower than Christoph Harfer. That is the second fastest run of the second heat. Shakes his head a little. Is it enough? Well, couple of errors. Well, the error was they're 800 slower at the start, Martin. Yeah. Look at their, that certainly you know, doesn't that? help. Five, well, watch him as he comes down the, the driver's left-hand wall here, John. He hits the uh, lump of ice that is sticking out right by this sign. Bink, there yeah. you go. If I was a driver, I would be out tonight shaving that wretched lump of ice off the wall. Then they throw you probably get jail. fined for... Yeah, you get, there you, you get go. fined in bobsled jail. Rostislav Gajtukovic now. 1,200s out of the medals with Mikhail Mordichov. Is this a big day for Guy Tukovic? He has had one bronze medal here on this track in January this year, at the end of last season. 
Can he do it again? 400s in hand over Brad Hall. And this is a great race between the two coming men of this season so far. 500 slower than their start, 507. So that start track up there is not what it was in the first run. Got the best velocity. One thing we noticed about him, Martin, he lost a lot of time on the bottom part of the track in the first run. Well, this the good news for him is if he can metal. tidy that up, he should be doing better. 10th best speed. 10th best speed. This is what happened to him. Gaps coming down. He only had 400s over Brad Hall and only started 600s better. Best Still 10th best there. speed. British Sled was going quicker at this stage. Well, Gaps coming down. He's got enough. Has he got enough? But it's single digits. But he will be oh, oh, no. in front of the line. So 52-1-8. Yeah. Martin, that was a better last 100 meters for him. Well, it's better than he finished Brad. last week. He finished sixth. Yeah. Brad Hall guaranteed a top five result. Rostislav Guy Tukovic guaranteed top four. Is that enough for a medal? He's happy with that, isn't he? Yeah, this is a good athlete in the front seat, for sure. Yep. And Martin, at the Yangqing track a month ago, he finished in a bronze medal position. So look at the size of the brakeman. Put himself in there and <laughs> stuff him in that little bathtub. Yeah. Get him. Look how low they get. Can you see the brakeman right here? No. Look at who's got the speed. Brad Hall had a half kilometer better speed. Yeah. That's why that lead went from like 24 all the way down to 12 at the bottom. Well, these guys had the fastest start in the first heat. And look at Mordasov. I mean, Guy Tukovic, if you stood is. next to him in a crowd, he's not a short guy. Mordasov is I'm not sure what the Russian for lurch is, but we're close to that, aren't we? OK, three to go for the medals here in Innsbruck. Justin Cripps of Canada with Cam Stones behind him. Last week, 100th shy of a medal in fourth place. Today, 2700s out of the lead, 1200s out of silver. It's been a while since Cripps has been in the medals here. Well, he's got the opportunity. And, you know, 5'11 in the first heat, everybody's four or five hundred slower. So he's got to get off here on a 14 or a 15. The Russian had 512. Every hundred count. Silver medalist back in 2017, a whole quad and a bit ago. That's great. 512. That's, he's only 100 slower. That's awesome. Fourth best yeah. velocity, though. That's not good. Again, the snow up at the start not helping. They will sweep after him. Well. He should go out be close. 400. 400. There it is. He's online. Best speed. Yeah, great he's speed as well. First run. He keeps these numbers up. He's growing the lead. That needs the best speed here on the exit, and this is perfect. Third best speed. Should be enough. 11. Yeah, he's going away. This is a bronze medal for yeah. Team Cripps. First medal on this medalist. track since 2017. <laughs> Rossislav Gajtukovic is second, might get to take a medal, but I wouldn't be putting money on it. Justin Cripps and Cam Stones in the medals. Nice run, baby, from Cam Stones, the Rugby Sevens player. Well, look at the uh, runners. He let that sled climb on the outlet there, and it came straight. So, can't fault that, Martin. That was a pressure run. And Justin Cripps, down here in the speed part of the track, he delivered enough speed to put himself into at least a bronze medal. Well, anyone who goes... Anyone who goes last in the final run of the Olympic Games shooting for gold and takes gold they can stand the pressure, can't they? That's Boy, just that was Chris. exciting. Boy, that Come was out. exciting. Two to go. Hansi Lochner, the only man to have beaten Francesco Frigic in a two-man bobsleigh in 18 months. 
15 hundredths off the lead with Christian Rusp behind him. Ooh, 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 little drift there. Not a very good start at all. No. 16th best velocity. There's a there's an issue here. Oh. He's in red numbers. He's going to have to drive himself back into position. Well, there is a big gap between first and second. Cripps and Gajtukovic of 14 hundredths. But if he is 14 hundredths no. behind Cripps. Here he comes. Here, here he comes. Six hundredths. Yeah. Six hundredths to the best speed. Down to three. Oh. Anzi Lochner. Perfect exit there. He's now in the green numbers. The best speed. He's driving himself into a silver medal. Four yeah. hundredths. Silver medalist last week. Silver medalist with Christian Rusp in the second race of the double yeah, two-man weekend two in December. Oh boy, for that, for that mistake that he had at the start, yeah. there was, I'm sure there was concerns with the coaches looking on that. Hansi? Well, Cripps and Lockhart sent I set identical times in the second heat. And Guy Tukovic only 600 slower than them. Whoa, don't injure yourself when you get out of the sled. Watch this now. Watch the sled drift to the left. When they look at the speed at the start, Cripps. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Seven kilometers. Ten, or ten, seven tenths of a kilometer. Look at where the sled drifts. Look at see his runners. Look at him steer yeah. out of there. That. Yeah. That's why he had the bad velocity. He shouldn't have to steer around that first. Didn't curve. have a cup so load either. A body lean. Yeah, that's a body like lean. He was running it a long way down into turn one. So. <laughs> the Alpenhorn again, one to go, and it is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margis, 11 two-man World Cup wins in Innsbruck alone. Now, what is the jury member or the organizer member there? Somebody's in the track. Sorting out. Yeah, should not Somebody's... be anybody in the track. They should not be sweeping or blowing at this something, stage. Something wrong here. Matt? This could be... This is maybe not Hansi scheduled. Through some, something's up. They, if they could, somebody could shoot down the track and see what's there. Snow, Snow in the in timing, the timing eye. eye. Ooh, okay. ooh. This used to be an old trick back in the day of the old natural tracks that somebody would throw something out of the back of their sled during a snowstorm so they get a five minute delay. Next guy comes down with a full track of <laughs> snow. No snow. Just, you know, a good sportsman move. Yeah. But. <laughs> and now, so these guys, they're out of the rhythm here. You know, this is Thorsten Marcus. Yeah. I mean, he's a veteran. How many times has he won with uh, Francisco Friedrich? Friedrich well, won he's won seven times else. with Francesco on this track alone. So, you know, there's mileage there. And again, so you, you know, pacing around like a caged tiger, but he's just trying to make sure he keeps those muscles warm because what you don't want is to allow the muscles to start getting cold and then give it the full beans. Thorsten Margus is the I think, highest. In the cap. Thorsten Margus is the highest ranked decathlete in the competition. I don't know exactly how many points, but uh, Got that written down someplace. And Friedrich himself. 7,440 7, or something, is that right? Yeah. I don't yeah, remember. That sounds but, right. Uh, quite a few. Quite a few. Time the ice okay, free. So, so I think the, we are ready to go. It's only got All right, so Francesco. <laughs> yeah. Is it enough to put off Friedrich? It seems unlikely, to be honest. But. He lost more than 1,500s in the second heat last week. 5.08, yeah, but he had a their third. first start. 5.09, look at that. Best velocity. And last yep. week, Martin, in the first heat, he was 3,400s ahead. That's like being on another planet on a short 1,200-meter track. And he came back in the second run. He's a little human. He was only like 10-hundreds ahead of the field. But, you know talked about it, Martin. He's lost one race in this Olympic quad. Two races. Which is yeah. One race here and one time off the podium in St. Marin. Yeah. I don't know how he does it. Did you ask him last week if he gets bored of winning? Best speed. Yeah, he doesn't know. He just does what he does and they enjoy doing it. And they like to, they love to do it. And they just keep doing it. And again, 
It is the eighth win in Innsbruck alone for Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Margis. It is Friedrich's 12th two-man win on this track. That is 12 two-man wins. Not only does he win the race, he wins every heat. That's yep. the thing that shocks me, is he wins every single heat. He, he, doesn't, he hasn't lost five heats in four years. His 57th two-man medal. It is his 76th race. Just think about that. That is better than 80%. Oh, this sport? <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't want to that, that is his 39th win. He's got 18 other medals. 10 silver, 8 bronze, 39 wins. I mean, the man is just remarkable. Oh, and by the way, he can also drive a four-man. Francesco Friedrich wins from Hansi Lochner and Justin Cripps. Guy Tukovic, Hall and Hartha, the top six. Career best for Tentea in seventh. Mikel Vogt eighth through to Ronaldo ninth. Cody Bascu rounding out the top 10. Good day for Monaco and the USA there. Marcus Treichel makes the cut just outside the top 10 this week. Roman Heinrich came up the order well. And looking further back, Hunter Church, 20th last week, 20th this, but made the cut both times as he recovers from that injury. So that is how they finished in the second race of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. And that's it for Innsbruck as we head next week to Friedrich's home track, Altenburg in Germany. Do not expect the Francesco Friedrich show to change any. Change. John, he looks in devastating form this weekend as well. You know, Mark, they also say when they test all the athletes in the summer, they say that Friedrich tests as good as all of his breaking. They say he's that good of an athlete. Look how low he is there in that cowling. I mean, <laughs> it's almost like he needs what a else? periscope to see out over the top. He's a little old lady in Miami driving her Cadillac. Francesco Friedrich, a perfect score so far. Two wins ahead of Hansi Lochner with two second places. Justin Cripps and Brad Hall, third and fourth. Guy Tutkovic and Vogt in the top half dozen in points. Ruda Rinaldi in the top 10. Mihai Tentea, eighth in World Cup rankings. But the man who finished third overall last year, Dominic Dvorak, only 16th place. He is not having a great time of it. So we are done this season with Innsbruck. Tomorrow. Uh, uh, yeah, well, for the two man. Yes, you're right. We've got the four man race and the women's spot tomorrow. But uh, for two man, the next port of call will be Altenburg in Saxony. But as John pointed out, there is bobsledding tomorrow. It starts at 10 local with a women's bob. That is 0900 Greenwich Mean Time. And that, I'm afraid to say, is 0400 Eastern. Be there, we will. Until then, on behalf of John Morgan and the IBSF TV crew, Martin Haven saying thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, for the women's bobsleigh followed by the full man in the afternoon. Bye for now.
schön durch den Sumpf oben gefahren, ey. A4, hm. A4 drin. Wir haben bestimmt nur noch mal vorne den Start ja. gemacht, sonst in der Bahn nicht. Nee. Da hat es nochmal schön reingeschneit. Das habe ich mir schon gedacht. Aber okay, gehofft, ja. Das wird schon irgendwie gehen. Hey. We don't hear you. Auf Englisch bitte. No. no. <lacht> okay. We ready, guys? Yeah. Yes. Even if you are. Ready when you are. <lacht> <lacht> Francesco Frugic, Torsten Margis, this is your seventh, I beg your pardon, I'll start that again. <laughs> Francesco Frugic and Torsten Margis, this is your eighth win together on this track in Innsbruck. What is it about this track that is so good for you guys? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, I drive here since 12 years, I think. I have so much runs than the, the homeboys here, I think, and yeah. We are good at the start. We know the track so well, and yeah, even some snow can don't bring us yeah out our line. I think. And Torsten, there was a slight delay with the timing system just before the start when you are really ready to go. How do you handle a problem like that? Oh, that's we 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 are used to that in Innsbruck. <laughs> we uh, there are often such problems uh, at the start uh, when we are at the top but um yeah we we just we didn't care today it is it is what it is and um you just have to start fast and and you you think uh now or never and it's it's okay all right well you're fast and you're healthy and your driver is doing an okay job so yes, it's a good day he, he, it's okay it's okay yeah <laughs> it's okay <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank well you done. So much. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you. Very possibly. All right. <laughs> Sleep well. Good night.
So bitte die beiden Herren am Start. Vorsicht bei der Lichtschranke, danke. Aber jetzt haben wir das Ding ausgeschaltet. Wunderbar, vielen Dank. So, meine Damen und Herren, ladies and gentlemen, willkommen zur Siegerehrung im Zweierbob der Herren of the Mod Ceremony. Two Man Bobsleigh, IBSF World Cup, Bob und Skeleton hier in Innsbruck Eagles. Die zweite Station oder zum zweiten Mal sind wir hier zu Gast an dieser Bahn und dürfen jetzt die drei besten Zweierbob-Teams gleich ehren. Zuvor noch ein riesengroßes Dankeschön und ein Applaus an das gesamte Bahnteam hier rund um Bahnleiter Andreas Hagen. War wirklich eine wunderbare Geschichte, trotz widriger Witterungsbedingungen, dass man das hier so gut abwickeln konnte. Seitens der Hauptorganisation der Olympia World Innsbruck, Gesamtorganisatorin, das ist Claudia Lösch. Dann dürfen wir ganz herzlich begrüßen und willkommen heißen den Präsidenten der IBSF, Ivo Ferriani. Weltcup-Delegierter der IBSF, das ist Jos Matti aus der Schweiz. Rennleiter in diesem Falle bei den Bobbewerbern Walter Reitmeier. Der Jurypräsident Kurz Gattis aus Lettland. Dann die Jurymitglieder Judelka Janika aus Lettland und Gesuito Pasquale aus Italien. Und die Materialkontrolle durch Usmoser und Dragos Panadescu aus Rumänien. Ja, und dann kommen wir zu den drei besten Zweierbob-Teams am heutigen Renntag. Dritter Platz, Third Place, representing Canada, Justin Cripps, Cam Stones. Wir rufen auf, zweiter Platz, second place, representing Germany, Deutschland, Johannes Lochner, Christian Rasp. Und Sieg, wie schon vergangene Woche, hier in Innsbruck, the winner. First place, representing Germany, Deutschland, Francesco Friedrich und Thorsten Magis. Und nun, meine Damen und Herren, ladies and gentlemen, zu Ehren der Sieger. Aus Deutschland, Francesco Friedrich und Thorsten Magis, die deutsche Nationalhymne, the National Anthem of Germany. Gratulation also nochmal. Francesco Friedrich und Thorsten Magis gewinnen hier die Zweierbob-Konkurrenz vor Johannes Lochner, Christian Rasp und an der dritten Stelle Justin Cripps, Campstones aus Kanada. Das war's vom heutigen Bewerb Samstag. Morgen am Sonntag noch der Zweierbob-Bewerb der Frauen und am Nachmittag dann der spannende Viererbob-Wettkampf hier in Igels an der Bahn. Start Vormittag ist um 10 Uhr. Bis dahin wünsche ich Ihnen jetzt noch einen schönen Abend und eine gute Nacht.
Thank you. 